Welcome back to Fireplace Story. I hope you're enjoying all of our very spooky books for Halloween. As I'm a witch, I must have a cat. And I've got my cat to show you. Her name is Tabby. And today we're going to be reading a story all about a witch's cat and a cooking catastrophe. Let's have a look and see. The Witch's Cat and the Cooking Catastrophe Written by Kirsty Watson and illustrated by Magdalena Sorco. If you want a copy of this book, have a look in the description below. We've put a link. Maybe you already have this book at home. Why don't you go and get it? And you can read along with me. Remember, do stick around to the end of the story because I've created a wonderful activity sheet that goes along with this book. Let's get started on our spooky witch story time today. One day, a witch's cat found a dusty old cookbook and it gave him the most marvellous idea. I know, said the cat excitedly. I will make a super scrumptious surprise lunch for my lovely witch. How hard can it possibly be? And as he eagerly flicked through the pages, he found the perfect recipe called Witch's Broth. Five fish heads, four splodges of frog spawn, three dried lily blossoms, two drops of dragonfly tears, one pinch of magic witching dust. Directions. Throw it all in, stir and leave for a minute. Ooh, I don't think it sounds very delicious. I don't know if I would like five fish heads for my lunch. Excellent, said the cat. She's a witch and I'm sure she'll like broth, whatever that is. Then he roughly followed their directions, adding an extra sprinkle of magic witching dust for good measure. Ah, I'm rather excellent at this cooking thing. He was boasting to himself when, poof, ah, it was ready. The mixture was green and gurgly. Ooh, I don't think that sounds very nice, does it? The cat took a big sniff. Mmm, delicious. But it needs just a little something else. And he knew just the thing. Seasoning. So he added some herbs and spices before finishing it. Off with the perfection with a good shake of salt and pepper. They're much better, he said, feeling very pleased with himself. Mm. Don't know if it sounds very delicious to me. Would you like a witch's broth? Or would you prefer some pasta? I think I'm with you there. Some pasta might be nicer. Just then, the lovely witch arrived home. Oh, cat, you've made lunch. What a wonderful surprise, she said happily. Well, this is interesting, said the witch, as she took a closer peek at the mixture, which was now making a funny fizzing sound. What's in it? No, wait. Don't tell me. Let me taste it and guess. 
And with that, she took a big spoonful. She swirled it around her mouth. Then she swallowed with a loud gulp. And zap! In a flash of light, she turned into a frog. Rip, rip it, said the frog. Oh no! shrieked the cat. That wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, what did the cat do wrong? And that's when he noticed an important scribble at the bottom of the page. Warning! Adding seasoning to a magic potion will make it stronger. So use sparingly or ideally not at all. Uh, potion? Oh no! This isn't a cookbook, he realised with horror. It's a... what do we think it is? A spell book, you're right. A spell book for making potions. Oh dear cat. What have I done? This is not good at all. It's a cooking catastrophe and I need to fix it now. Oh, a catastrophe. It kind of means a disaster. Something's totally went wrong. So, he searched and searched through the pages of the old spell book before deciding on a potion called Undo Soup, which needed five cat hairs, four meaty bones, three sunny morning dewdrops, two stinky old slippers, one pinch of magic witching dust, the directions, throw it all in, stir and leave for two minutes. <gasps> Do we think he'll get it right this time? Let's hope so. That poor witch is still a frog. Hopefully this will undo this terrible mess, he said. Then he set to work on making the new potion. And this time he was sure to follow the recipe to the very letter. Well, almost. He could only find one stinky old slipper, so he threw in some extra cat hairs instead. Aha! This seems easy enough. He was just thinking when suddenly... Oh no! What's Cat done now? Poof! It was ready. The mixture was blue and bubbling. This time he resisted adding seasoning before serving some up for the frog. And... <gasps> Zap! The frog changed into... <gasps> What's that? A dog! You're right! Woof woof! said the dog. Oh no, not again, said the cat. I really need to put this right. So he hurried back to the book to find the answer. Aha, this looks ideal, he said, reading aloud a recipe for... Oh, what do we think this is this time? Make a witch stew. Five glittery fish scales, four spindly spider legs, three tablespoons of frog spit, two sun ripened pumpkins, one pinch of magic witching dust. Throw it all in, stir, 
and leave for three minutes. Do we think Cat's going to get it right this time? I hope so. I wonder what colour the potion's going to be. Ah, hopefully this will make a witch this time, said the cat, as he followed the instructions super, super carefully. Well, kind of. There's no frog spit, so he used a smidge of dog drool instead. Oh no, I feel like something's going to go wrong here. The cat waited patiently for a moment, then poof! It was ready and the mixture was oddly orange. Once again, he avoided seasoning before dishing up for the dog. And what do we think is going to happen this time? Zap! The dog magically transformed into a very unhappy witch. I think I would be very unhappy if I'd been turned into a frog and then a dog. Ribbit! Ribbit! Woof! Woof! said the witch crossly. Oh dear, said the cat. I guess it did need the frog spit after all. Oh no, the witch can't talk. Thankfully, the potions eventually wore off and the lovely witch returned to her normal self. But the cat was never allowed to make lunch ever again. Aha, she didn't mention magic though. He said quietly as he picked another interesting book and started planning the next magical adventure. The end. Oh dear, I wonder what Cat's going to get up to next. What a lovely book. Poor Cat, he was only trying to help the witch and it turned into a bit of a catastrophe. If you like this book, please remember to hit the like button. Do remember to subscribe as we've got some wonderful books being released all the way through Halloween and you don't want to miss out. We've got a lovely activity sheet that goes along with this book. If you're a preschooler and starting to learn your initial sounds, then have a look in the description below and we've got a very spooky initial sounds activity sheet. Get your grown up to take a photo and you can tag us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and we'll be sure to share your very spooky work with everyone. Until next time, and I hope to see you back in my very spooky witch's cave. Bye-bye.